This is the best Pokemon game. Not only can you fuse any Pokemon together to create amazing or cursed fusions, the story is awesome. It has cameos of famous characters from multiple games, and you get to play through two regions similar to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Except this time, it's flipped. We already did Kanto on the channel, but Johto is way more insane than I could have imagined. And this is that story. To start our journey, we get off the train in Goldenrod, and I'm already lost on where to go. I feel like Zoro in one piece because I have no idea where I'm supposed to be. And it turns out you're supposed to fight Whitney first, which is lovely because in all of my years of Pokemon, Whitney is definitely one of the hardest gyms I've ever fought. Was it because I was a kid or was it because her mill tank was BS? Now our team is incredible to start off. Just look how cool they look. First up, we have Zook the Nuke, the Ghost and Electric type, Electivire, and Gengar fusion. Next up, the Ghost Dragon Draco, a Flygon and Chandelure fusion. Then we have the Steel and ground type Haggy, the Groudon and Aegislash fusion. Then the beautiful fairy and dark type Lindsay, the Zorark and Sylveon fusion. The behemoth, the fighting and bug type Silo Reborn, that is a Pinsir and a Polyrath fusion. And then the one and only Leaderfoot, a fire and water type that's an Arcanine and a Lapras fusion. Please tell me in the comments you understand what Leaderfoot is referencing. Already Whitney is showing her age as her gym puzzle is completely rigged. I keep doing the puzzle puzzle's correct, but it says I keep getting them wrong. After fighting all of her minions, we finally make it to Whitney, and she leads off with a Steelix Rayquaza fusion. I'm praying this fusion is steel flying and not dragon steel. I go for Thunderbolt, and it happens to be super effective, which is great. The next fusion that comes out is this anime villain-looking guy, but I'm still not worried because Zoo the Nuke still has Levitate, and one Shadow Ball knocks it out with ease. Haggy cleans up this atrocity, and then out comes... I don't even know what this is. Please comment down below, what is in that syringe? This is Lucario and Blissey. So, I mean, Blissey has a really good special defense and HP, so this thing is no pushover. I'm predicting a fighting move from this Lucario, so I switch out to Draco, which, truly enough, it goes for close combat, but follows up with Dragon Pulse, which almost knocks out our Drago. And I should probably mention, this is a hardcore Nuzlocke. We aren't allowed to heal in battle, and if a Pokemon ever faints, they're dead forever, which is terrifying, because I get so attached to these incredible fusions. We switch out to Lindsay, our fairy type, to finish it off. All that's left is this derpy Hello. guy, and I have Leaderfoot come on out and get an easy dub. We go for Fire Fang, and this thing zap cannons. It lands the 50% accuracy move, and Leaderfoot only lives on 3 HP. Y'all clearly saw how much I love Leaderfoot, so my heart rate is through the roof right now <laughs> that we almost lost it in the first gym. But I'm able to switch out and finish up the battle. No death so far, but a load of close calls. It's time to head south to the next town. But before that, let me tell you about the Red Magic 8 Pro, today's video sponsor. You can't get a better phone if you enjoy mobile gaming. Whether it's Pokemon Unite, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, anything. The camera doesn't do it justice how beautiful these games look on this phone. And it gets even better. They literally have trigger buttons for your game. So for like Call of Duty Mobile, my index fingers are controlling the aim in and shooting. The design is so sleek and beautiful with a 6.8 inch screen display and a beautiful refresh rate of 120. You can get up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and half a terabyte of storage. This is just a computer in the palm of my hand. Not to mention the battery life has felt fantastic and the dual stereo speakers are crystal clear. It's never been easier to game on the go. Then check this out. When your boss comes around in the corner and you aren't doing anything wrong, you're just typing business emails on your phone. But as soon as he walks away, bam! Easily switch to the gaming mode that all your games are ready to launch lunch and play. Also, there are plenty of designs to choose from. I have the Platinum phone, but they also have the Midnight and the Aurora. I could go on and on just how fantastic this phone is today. You should absolutely check them out by clicking my link in the description and pick one up today. On the way there, we're already running into some amazing Pokemon fusions that I've never seen before. So obviously, I'm ecstatic. Ecstatic? Ecstatic? That's a word, right? Yes! We run into Yusin, and I don't remember him being a villain, but I guess he's all salty and pissed off from not having Suicune still, and he's flooded the well. Hopefully there was no people down there. We get the HM dive to go underwater and fix it up, and this part is just really dang cool. It feels like an actual like mini game within Pokemon. And I guess I'm showing my age as I'm a dad struggling at a kid's slowpoke puzzle, but I'm finally able to clear it up and drain the well. Now it's time to prepare for the next gym. We head inside, and once again, it's a puzzle that you have to complete by
by audio, but I'm always playing my own music in my stream. So I just kind of guessed my way through the puzzle and fought trainers. And in the midst of all this, we would have our very first death. The longest tiramisu was measured at 897 feet and three inches. Almost as long as my car. Ah, so it's rock bug, fell stinger. Okay, not gonna do anything to me. This insanely cool Flygon and Chandelure fusion was gone. Although we didn't have him long, Flygon is one of my favorite Pokemon and I'm devastated. The only bright side that I have is I remember we did catch a Slack off, so we have a future slacking fusion, but this one still hurts. And we have a Pokemon that we got from Kanto that we really never got to use and I'm so excited for this fusion. We got Slacking and Salamence. We had this pseudo legendary for so long and he just never made the team. But Fusing this pseudo with slacking makes it obviously not have true on amazing bulk and attack and the ability intimidate. The stats on the thing are actually insane and his move pull is incredible too. Also, it kind of reminds me of like maybe a gargoyle from a Disney movie like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. We make it to the gym leader who is a rock type trainer and we have some pushovers at first, but then it goes to a Pokemon almost 10 levels higher than us. I was trying to keep my levels low to make it more challenging and exciting for the viewers and I'm about to throw away my run at the second gym. Haggy tries knocking this thing out with an earthquake to get it off the field, but he lives in the red and has the same idea going for EQ against me and Haggy barely survives. Luckily, we outspeed and we finish it off and then it, it goes to Squidward. <laughs> We finish up the gym, grabbing our second badge in Johto, and head through the tunnel to Violet City. Nothing really happens except for the fact that we run into Armored Mewtwo, Reptar, and an awesome Dark Ryan Groudon fusion. And then we make it to Violet City to be greeted by Yusin again. I'm actually curious, was he like supposed to be a villain inside of like Crystal and Hargold and Soul Silver, or did they just make him one in this game for some reason? We walk into the next gym, and I learn it's a fairy type gym. I take a look at my team and notice that I stand no chance against fairy types. If Haggy goes down our steel type, we're done. So it was time to head to the PC and rebuild, and our next two creations were absolutely insane. Introducing Mount Lady and Chomper. I could so be a narrator. In this corner, the one, the only. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. We head back to face Faulkner, and his lead is, um, yeah. But we can't take it lightly because, I mean, it's still a slack it. He hammer arms me and Haggy goes to yellow, but luckily it lowered his speed and we can finish him off. The next Pokemon isn't that big of a deal, but then it goes to this curse fuel kind of thing. It may actually be the root of all evil, but I mean, it sucks as a Pokemon, so we take care of it easily. Then one of my best friends, Vintendo's child comes out and I completely lose it. No, now that! It's Vinny! Yo, oh. Vinny ever has a kid! That's what it's gonna look like! We finish up the gym grabbing our third badge and go get some more encounters. We run into the professor and he asks if we're the real deal as we only have three badges. But like, homie, I, I have all of the badges of Kanto! He then tells us the location of Mewtwo, which is the same place that it always is, Cerulean really Cave, but this time you need Waterfall. Before going anywhere, though, we look at our Johto starters. Trash, dumpster, and udders. Mm. We grab udders to fuse to make this abomination that kind of went viral recently. It's time to rebuild our team and we have two new amazing fusions. The new and improved Silo and one of my favorite Pokemon that I've ever laid eyes on. We make our way to the ruins of Alf to see you seen once again. I'm wondering what this idiot's gonna do now. This guy's clearly a villain. What are you gonna do now? Kill everyone in the city? Answer me, you seen! We head down beneath the ruins of Alf to see another legendary fusion and at first I'm thinking of like another trio like we fought in Kanto. But it turns out just to be Raikou and Suicune and Yusin gives us his story. Obviously, this idiot's got nothing better to do than just chase Suicune around, and that's why he flooded the well to attract him. But it also brought out Raikou, and with them both in the well, he threw in a DNA splicer in the water, and it fused them together. Terrified, the new creation ran off, and that's why he's running through the ruins. So obviously, I'm just hoping we can maybe catch this new fusion. Unfortunately not, but I did learn that we can get through the dark cave by blowing up a rock with dynamite that's two inches in front of us, and then heading into the Black Thorn, the next gym. Claire still ends up being a dragon Dragon type gym leader in the randomizer and leads off with a Vaporeon and Kingdra fusion. We manage to kill it with ease, but then things really start to go south. Out comes a Roserade and Hydreigon fusion. I'm expecting a poison move to come at my fairy mon, so I switch into my steel and ground type. It goes for paddle dance. Paddle dance. <laughs> paddle dance. <laughs> 
He goes for pedal dance and does well over half of my health. I start to panic and realize the only one I can go to is Crimson to at least resist and then go for Dragon Claw. It still does almost 100 damage. We manage to outspeed and kill. I feel a bit of relief, but only for a second as the final boss basically gets thrown out. A Lucario and Kiram fusion. It has to be Dragon, so its second typing is either Fighting or Steel. I go to my Fairy type silo, praying for a Dragon move and luck out. And although I've put several hours in this game, I still can't can't remember exactly how the typings work, so I'm just kind of hoping. If this fusion is fighting in dragon, then my draining kiss is going to be four times effective and kill with E. But if it's dragon and steel, it's not only not four times weak, it is neutral. The draining kiss lands, and yup, it's steel type. Meaning my fairy type Pokemon on the field could die to a steel move any minute now. Since it's steel type, I go for Aura Sphere just trying to get some damage off on it. It's down to about half health, but Silo can't take any more hits. So I switch into my ghost type Zook, praying for another extreme speed, but it switches itself out? We one-shot the little lad that she sends out, and once again, here comes another Grass High Dragon Fusion, and you guessed it, Pedal Dance once again. It does insane damage to our Zook, and we have to switch again. We go to Crimson, the only Pokemon I have to resist, and I pray I can outspeed. Crimson takes the hit, and the opponent gets confused. Here's where I'm gonna learn. Do I outspeed this Pokemon? I do not. It outsped me. No, no, please. <gasps> oh my god! My heart is beating so fast. It lived on 8 HP. Crimson is barely alive. I'm happy, but also terrified because I still have that Lucario fusion to deal with. I switch out to Silo, our fairy type, expecting a dragon move, but of course it goes for E-Speed once again, was able to kill our new Silo. This would be our second, but of course not our final death in Johto. With Silo sacrifice, we're able to go to Hunter for a clean switch and superpower and finish off the gym leader and collect our badge. The chat and myself said our goodbyes and start to rebuild our team once more, which involved getting a Pokemon that could have eaten those pedal dances, a bulky Meganium and Sylveon fusion. A very good Pokemon, but it does have a glaring weakness of four times weak to poison. We make our way up the mountain and see there's a giant gap that we can't get over. I talked to some strangers, please do not do this at home, and learned the only way to get over this gap is with something from the monks from Violet City. So I head to Bellsprout Tower to learn it's just another sneaky mini game where you have to avoid people seeing you or a Pokemon catching you. And little side note, Growing up in the 90s, I absolutely love little mini games like this from platformers or games like Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper. This fills my heart with so much joy in a Pokemon game. We grab something called the Golbat Boots, hop on over and make our way to the next town. Here in Mahogany, we're about to see the coolest gym yet. Now I'm from Georgia. Hockey isn't really popular where I'm from. When I was a kid, we had a hockey team called the Thrashers, but that didn't last that long. You have to pass the puck around to score a goal to face the gym leader. This is so cool. And obviously, Obviously, being the coolest looking gym, this is going to be the most difficult gym. Nah, we swept it with ease. Thank you, Zook. We make our way to the Lake of Rage and run into Colrus from the Unova region. I disagree. And he says that this rock possesses the same energy as the giant chasm from his own region. So I'm guessing this has to do with the story later. For now, it's time to get that shiny Gyarados. Well, what I thought was going to be a shiny Gyarados. Oh my god, what is that? Immediately after we head to Equitique City, and I'm just ready for another gym fight since the last one was such a breeze, but this gym is locked. We head to the Burn Tower and do another really cool puzzle. Game Freak. Take some notes. These are the puzzles missing from your game, not trying to catch us on floor at 2 FPS. We find Morty and he returns to his gym. Off the bat, I see one of the coolest fusions yet and realize this is an ice type gem. I'm not too worried about it, but then we make it to Morty and his first Pokemon is insane. I happen to do some good damage, but then he outrages and almost one shots Leaderfoot, so we have to immediately switch out to our fairy type, which luckily finishes it off. What comes in next can have huge power and is an ice skill type, and I'm Grass Fairy, so I immediately have to switch out. I go to Haggy for a Lava Plume and one-shot it, and in comes this very derpy fusion, and luckily another one-shot. Starting to feel great, I'm underestimating this last Pokemon, and for some reason, I go for Lava Plume, and then he almost kills our Haggy with Blizzard. My butt fully clenched, I go to Hunter and land a few hits, finish up the job, and grab our next badge. We have to take down the Kimono Girls, which is pretty easy, but then I'm trying to find out where to go. Turns out Alder gives us a light and dark song, granting us access 
access to Bell Tower. We meet up with the security guard who's very strict on who he's gonna let by, but then he just lets us through with E. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. I can't let anyone by. Not even the Kanto champion. It's sensitive information that can affect the world's survival up ahead. But I got these rocks! Oh, sure, kid. Why didn't you say so? I could have shot Alder down and stole those stones and lied. What kind of guard is this? We do some tedious puzzles to get to the very top, and I'm expecting ho -Oh, but something completely different happens. Dude, what's gonna happen? I'm so interested. They are fused! Wait! I have a master ball! I yeet the master ball I have and take our legendary fusion home. We have a visitor! This is my dog, Toph! Pa? Good girl. Up! Good girl. If you can tell me where her name Toph is from, you're incredibly cool. We head back to Chorus to elaborate what we found, and the worst possible thing happens. Orange water flying. No, because then I would be not very effective. Fire, that one's cool. That one's really cool. Yeah, it's tough guy, huh? Why every time do I say tough guy, huh? I lose a Pokemon! I had gotten too comfortable. When's the last time I've lost a Pokemon? And why is it every time I do the eh, tough guy, huh? I lose a Pokemon. This happened in Kanto, too. All right, this is fine. It's fine. You think I'm afraid of you, huh, tough guy? And this might be our biggest dagger yet. We had finally lost Leaderfoot. Please pay your respects in the comments below. I spent like 30 minutes mourning and trying to decide on who's gonna be our sixth member now, but nothing could replace my love for Leaderfoot. We ended up going with Mewchamp, which is a pretty solid substitute, but nothing compared to Leaderfoot. We head back to Colrus, and this guy has absolutely no respect for fishes as he freezes the entire lake and all the fish within. Like, just think, there's a Magikarp family down there, and they're just dead now. They're dead! We have a lovely ice puzzle meant for children that took me way longer than I'd like to admit, but it was all worth it. We- Oh! Oh my god! That came out of nowhere! I spent like 10 minutes preparing a team to make sure I could catch this, all to just realize how dumb I am. I've been streaming this game for weeks now. A randomized game. And I somehow forgot this is a randomizer. Ah! And after that, I'm back to being completely lost in the game. Oh, wait, no. Johto's completely different. How am I just noticing this? Where are all the other cities? Turns out I'm supposed to go back to the Sevi Islands to find Chuck, as half of Johto is just, like, missing. I make it there, and I just love how this guy is still training under a waterfall. I talk to him, and it triggers the battle immediately, and I start to panic. I thought we were just chatting about our gym sessions, like how good his waterfall is, and how I'm doing really good with my 15. But nope, we gotta battle him, and I didn't heal my team. Luckily, he was a ghost type gym and our team countered him pretty nicely. We now head to this mysterious island and climb to the very top avoiding every bird in sight to be greeted by this beautiful fusion. This amazing fusion is definitely going to be added to my team. I cannot wait to catch this. Nope, I fell completely and it struggled to death. Sick, dude. Time to head back down the mountain. But lo and behold is what they say. What goes around comes around. That doesn't make any sense in this. Oh, I don't have repel up. Oh my god! No way! After felling that fusion, on my way to the next town, I run into ho -Oh, our encounter, and was able to catch him. It showed three times like, no! It is Priestbird! No. Yeah! Oh my god, let's go! After that massive W, we make it to the next island and head to the forest where you usually find Lost Teal, but this time it's even cooler. You have to help these six boys reunite in the forest, but there turns out to be a seventh as Zorak was hiding amongst them! Vote him out! We're on our way to find the next gym, come across some really cool fusions, and make our way to Chrono Island, only to find out that Team Rocket is fighting with Team Plasma? With the amount of references and fusions and mini games and boss battles, this is one of the most fun games I've ever played. We take care of all of their cool fusions and get ready to fight Jasmine. She has one of the coolest fusion leads, and our Pokemon is almost taken out, so we have to switch. Crimson, once again, proving he's the GOAT and taking out all of the fusions left and right and then this idiot comes out <laughs> is that a troll face no <laughs> i couldn't believe i was actually about to fight a pokemon with a troll face and crunch again we don't kill we almost kill try attack we definitely live
Every time I watch this back, I just remember how much pain I felt. But Dylan, what are you doing with those thighs out on camera? <laughs> so stupid. I don't even know if that's gonna make the cut. Oh. Now, if we play this back, I want you to see. It lived on one HP, literally one HP. No, he doesn't have sturdy, he had download. Oh God, we just lost our best Pokemon right before the end of the game. All to this idiot. Oh. We clean up the rest of Jasmine's team and spend the night mourning our lost loved one. The next day, I spent a lot of time trying to fuse different Pokemon to fill that gaping hole of Crimson dying. But ultimately, we ended up on this goofy dragon and steel type that has the ability to levitate, making him only weak to fighting. I don't know how many gamers we have out there, but does this guy not remind you of some like boss that would be in like the Rayman universe? Anyways, we ended up naming him Gus Bus and head to the professor. But to my surprise, Cynthia's there. She speaks of a powerful Pokemon on top of Mount Silver. Scientists from her own region have gathered and noticed odd readings up there. She claims the physics on top are just really strange, as like time and space are really being distorted. And as someone who believes Sinnoh is peak Pokemon, I'm excited! We make our way from Mount Silver, all to be blindsided by our rival in a dark cave. What? Well, dude, I don't even know where I am! What?! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, I didn't even see you! Luckily, I am fully healed, but I'm a bit under level. Everything was going swimmingly all up until... Okay, all right. Whoa! Another death directly after us losing Crimson. I really gotta start being more careful if I even wanna make it to the summit, much less try to beat what's ever up there. We make it out of the battle, even with this untrio trying to use Fissure on Haggy. Nah, like if that landed, I would've quit the game then and there. We end up trying new fusions with Ho, and although this didn't make the team, I absolutely love this fusion with Torterra. We ended up on a very unique fusion, but also very powerful. Everyone, welcome the adaptability Porygon Holo Fusion. Heading back up the mountain, we run into Cynthia, who was having severe panic attacks to what she witnessed at the summit. She explains we must turn around, but obviously, you know, I gotta see what's up there. She then challenged us to a battle in hopes to defeat us and make us turn back. I'm so excited for this battle, win or lose, as I believe Cynthia is one of the best champions in all of Pokemon. Comment down below, do you agree or disagree? And if you disagree, who's better than Cynthia? We start off smoothly taking down our lead and then a Ferrothorn Fusion. Two down already, which is pretty pretty nice. But in comes this guy. But of course, as always, when I'm caught off guard, to my surprise, this would be the last time we ever got to use Zook. Yes! It wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted, but it's still. Hey, thank you, shiny man. Crimson, dead. Silo, dead. Zook, dead. This is probably the most surprised I'd ever been with a Pokemon death. Like, I'm not even gonna edit this. Just look how long my jaw had hit the floor. completely one-shotted and decimated, and we were at full health. And the worst part is, this battle's not over. I'm so upset over that one. Why did that do no damage? Another heart-wrenching death, and we haven't even made it to the summit yet. Thankfully, we make it out alive, but as you can see by the look on my face, I'm not happy. Despite my despair, it's time to rebuild. We add back Mount Lady from earlier on in our journey alongside Ozzy the Drift Blam and Ampharos Fusion. I get all prepared and ready to fight whatever's on this summit, but then something insane happens. Your vision is only getting blurry. It is, it's Palkia. Is it just Palkia or is it a fusion? I feel like you're being transported through time and space. They almost hit three years. What? Was I? No way! I was just about to say I'm about to be fighting. Oh my god, I'm red! Oh, that is sick! This is really one of the coolest things to ever happen. We are transported to the future as red to fight gold on top of Mount Silver. Oh, it gives me goosebumps. But uh, due to the randomizer, he had a very anti-chromatic team. So we decided to unrandomize it and face it again. But before that, we ran into this behemoth. Oh, we're encountering it. Oh, no! This is the 
Climax, a triple fusion box art legendary 3v1 with no healing items in battle. We lead off with Haggy and go straight for Earthquake. Haggy the GOAT comes in clutch for us, but now I have to switch and preserve him to fight Gold. We go to Mount Lady to resist the attacks and luckily land a Hydro Pump to finish off Dialga. Only two parts of the fusion left. We sadly gotta sack her to get a clean switch in and I go into Ozzy to go for Discharge and pray I get a para for one of the two Pokemon. Unfortunately, I don't get it for either, and Ozzy goes down. Now it's time for Gus Bus. I go in only being weak to fighting, and obviously I know they have Aura Sphere. I'm mainly just trying to knock out Giratina, but watch closely what happens within seconds. I outsped. I didn't kill! I got a para! Yes! Oh my god! We land the Dragon Breath on Giratina, but don't kill, but then get the paralysis and then gets fully paralyzed. Oh, it's so beautiful. This allows us now to finish off Giratina and only have Palkia left. We switch into Amekage to recover stall, and it crits me with a Hydro Pump, which is really unfortunate because it was a really big throw from Adrenaline. We take a hit easily with Gus Bus and finish it off with a Dragon Breath. We lost half of our team, but all that's left is gold. And then we add our three final members of our team, Zook Danuk, Demon, and Manny. Look at him, I love him so much. And of course, this is a reference to Ice Age. Back on the summit of Mount Silver, we get ready for our final battle. Transported to the future again, Gold leads off with a Shuckle and Sudowoodo as I lead off with Haggy, the last remaining Pokemon from our OG team in Johto. This little idiot goes for a rollout when he get out with ease, but then comes in something really dangerous. Two of my favorite Pokemon from Johto, we have Suicune and Typhlosion fusing in to one deadly Pokemon. Gus Bus is our only counter to this Pokemon, luckily making it switch out to one small but yet sick. Pokemon. Oh, this is gonna be fun. A thick Pokemon with healing moves and serene grace. <laughs> oh, what could go wrong? I keep scalding to go for the burn, which is just not happening. And I wasn't thinking too clearly as this kind of negates Gus Bus in the future against that Suicune. I switch out to Haggy and of course it full restores, but luckily Haggy should handle this no problem. Right? I get back-to-back -back flinches from the Serene Grace, but finally land off my Iron Head. It goes for Body Slam, and of course, it gets that 60% para. And then I get fully paralyzed. Now this annoying Pokemon switches from Bites for flinches and Moonlight to heal himself. This Pokemon is pure evil. Every villain is Lemon. This little guy who's all cute and cuddly would go on to kill our last OG Pokemon. R.I.P. in the comments for Haggy. He lasted from the beginning to the very end. We get a clean switch into Hogan, who finishes them up, but then the troubles were only just beginning. In comes in a Dragonite and Gyarados, a Dragon Water type with good stats and Intimidate. I'm petrified it's gonna set up a D-Dance and just sweep my team, so I just kinda have to stay in and hope I can get a burn with Sacred Fire. But they all speed, land a waterfall, and kill off our Hogan. Things are not looking good, so we go into our good old Manny, one of our newest members to get his own D-Dance up. Not just one Dragon Dance, but two. For some stupid reason I go for Ice Fang and he has Rocky Helmet and Manny's pretty weak now. Luckily Manny manages to kill it with his next Earthquake. This is looking good for us baby. Now we Earthquake. Typhoon goes down. All that's left has to be a Raikou fusion. There's nothing else left. It's starter with Raikou. Oh, he's an air balloon. No. I just let that clip play a bit because there was so much adrenaline running all to be halted by one item air balloon. I go into Demon to sack him off, sadly, because he did nothing, and then we go out to the reincarnation of Zook the Noob. We land a Giga Drain and complete the amazing game of Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Thank you for watching.